Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Karen Lavender Clothesline. And although I've been having a little bit of a hard time with my videos, seeming too overlit and washed out, not sure what's going on there, I am just bound and determined to keep making videos and I will figure it out. But today I have a table full of goodies, stuff I've been sourcing from all over the place. And I wanna share some of this with you guys. So if you are interested in seeing what vintage hard goods that I'm gonna be selling in my store, or as usual, please hit that like and subscribe button and let's get started. Alright, so I guess there'll be no order to any of this. I'm just going to blow through it. I'm going to get through as many items as I can without racing on. And nope, I didn't have coffee. I'm just going to, I think, pick things up off the table. I do have my readers here today, so I can tell you what's written on the bottom, hopefully. And a lot of it, as usual, I know nothing about. But that's always the fun of it for me, is picking up things that I love and selling through. Right now, my sales are fairly good for summer, a little bit slower than normal but truthfully the slowdown during the summer is kind of nice I kind of like having that slower pace right before fourth quarter so as we know fourth quarter hits and we are off and running as resellers but today let's get started I'm going to show you things that I found and leave a comment down below of what your favorite find was maybe something you'd like to resell or maybe something for your own personal house okay first item up I'm showing you I would keep this for my own personal house, but my walls are filled, as I always say. And I'm going to show you is this beautiful bird and floral wall decor. Look how beautiful this is. I love this. So pretty. You can see on the back that it's a wall hanging. It's got its two hooks. And I'm not sure what kind of flower that is. Really pretty, though. And who is making this? This is put out by, it looks like Sirocco. Glasses on already, item number one. Let's see what this says. This is put out by Sirocco, made in USA. Sirocco made quite a few products, very prolific. And yeah, that's item number one. I paid $3 for this. This I found at the Williams Grove Flea Market. Whose booth? I don't even remember. But lately I've been attending the auctions and I will probably see a lot of the dealers there. And who knows how that will go. But really enjoying sourcing in auctions. So this is item number one and this I got at the Williams Grove Flea Market. All right, what shall we talk about next? I think I'm going to go with, hmm, this big statue. This statue is gorgeous, as you can tell. It is Mary, and she is just beautiful. Now, she is made out of a resin plastic, so I'd rather if she had been made out of, you know, a porcelain or something like that, but I found this at Goodwill, $4, and I originally did not find this. A girlfriend of mine, Kim, found this and put it in her cart, but then she decided she was going to put it back, and whenever Kim and I put things back and the other ones in the store, we always say, hey, do you want this before I put it back? And Mary was too beautiful. I did take her, but she does have a flaw. She has a crack or a chip, I should call it, that's been repaired. You can see it right there. Hope my camera focuses on that. But look at the face. Look how beautiful she is. And I do quite well with items like this. I imagine I'm gonna put her on probably about 40 or 50 and see if she sells at that price. Just gorgeous. So that is item number two. All right, item number three I showed on Instagram. Absolutely thrilled to find this item. And if you follow me over on Instagram, Lavender Clothesline, you'll have seen the post about this. Look at this gorgeous brass swan. This thing is heavy, just beautiful. And she, I think she's a she, is a planter. She's vintage. And I don't see any markings on her. But boy, is she pretty. Now, I've seen quite a few brass swans and ducks. I have never seen one in person this big. I'm gonna say she's gotta be, I don't know, 14 inches tall, and like I said, quite heavy. But I will ship her. I think she'll do fine being packaged and shipped out. And I'm not sure what I'm gonna charge for her, but I imagine it's going to be probably over the $100 mark because she is so beautiful. And what did I pay for her? I believe I paid $10 for her. I think the person, um, the vendor wanted 15 and I offered 10 and they took it. So yes to beautiful brass 
very heavy vintage swans. Okay, as long as we're doing Williams Grove, I'll just stick with the things I got at Williams Grove and show you this next sweetheart. Look at this little bear. Now, I don't do a lot of plush, <laughs> famous last words, but I really don't. If you look at my store, I probably have maybe, I don't know, eight or 10 things, if that many. But I believe this little bear who has movable appendages is hand sewn. I believe he is all hand sewn. I'm gonna have to look at him closer. And it says handmade something brown bear with daffodil. And originally his tag said $54. I did not pay $54. I paid four for him, but really sweet. I think he's made out of wool. That's a guess. Yeah, I really liked him and I thought he would do well. If you go over on Etsy and look at the handmade animals, especially the tiny ones that artists are making, so sweet, just beautiful. If I had nothing else to do in life, I think I would take up that craft. That must be very relaxing just to make really tiny little animals and just make them really um, anatomically correct. They're so beautiful. So that's a fun rabbit hole to go down. But I said yes to this little bear. I don't know what his name is. Isn't it funny how, how you say a he or a she when you don't really even know? And it's funny because his little heart necklace almost looks like the inside of a nutshell. I could be wrong about that, but that looks like these are where the seeds of that nut went and somebody actually carved the little, the little inside nut casing, I'm gonna call it. So I said yes to him. All right, this I did not get at Williams Grove. This is Goodwill, you'll see the sticker on the bottom. This is Lagerburger. I have a tendency to favor the baskets with the leather handles. And while this won't bring a lot, I paid $2 at Goodwill, just looking at this. This looks like one of the older ones. I'm gonna peel off the price sticker to see if it has a date underneath. 1990, so not especially old. But I thought this basket was really sweet and I paid $2. The next item I found was a belt with a buckle and it says Mule Shoe, Texas. I'm wondering if Mule Shoe is a city in Texas, if anybody knows their Texas towns or cities you could let me know, but I imagine that's what mule shoe is. Really beautiful leather belt, full grain cowhide, and Dundee is the brand, and it has the size. Now it has two numbers on it. It has 34 and 032. I'm thinking 34 is the size, but when I sell belts, I will go ahead and measure from the tip of the leather to the tip of the other side of the leather and give that measurement in case the size is off because something could be mismarked. So anytime I can include measurements, I go ahead and do that. And there is printing on the back of the buckle. I guess I could have noticed that beforehand. What does it say? It says Mule Shoe. Something Texas home of the National Mule Memorial World Championship Mule Shoe Pitching Contest. Texas oldest national wildlife refuge named for the mule without ancestral pride or hope for offspring. The mule made history. He went fast, endured much, ate sparingly, and helped the world over to bear burdens of mankind. Oh, I love that. So this belt buckle was made by Walt Byers in 1987 and Bostock Buckle Company. So then I'm not sure, um, and it has a number on it, number 464. So really nicely made belt buckle. I do quite well with belt buckles. And there it is again. I paid $3 for this. Okay, hope I'm not going too fast for you guys. Sometimes I just get into that groove and I wanna show you all my treasures. And you can tell I was a child that loved show and tell in school. I used to get so excited for show and tell. And I always tell this story. Here we go down a rabbit hole. I've told this before, how Long before my mother was really married or had children, my mother was a ballet dancer. And as her career progressed, somehow she also got involved with Tahitian dancing. Tahitian dancing had the war costumes and the big headdresses. I wish I had pictures. My mother was stunningly beautiful. She had dark hair down to her hips and she was not Tahitian or Hawaiian in any way. She was Greek, Italian, I think just Greek and Italian. 
but her whole life she was raised having dance lessons and at some point she got very interested in Hawaiian and Tahitian dancing and actually put together a troupe of dancers. Yep, my mother was the head dancer and they used to perform at Polynesian and different cultural events. She danced in the Macy's Day Parade and at quite a few other famous events. So having said all of that, she had brochures made up for her business. They had different uh, professional photographers come in and, and videoed um, her and her troupe and also pictures. So fast forward to when she had children, she still had some of these paper brochures and I happened to find one packed away, I think in the bottom of her closet. I loved going into my mother's closet. She had a big double closet just to see her costumes. She still had quite a few of the things. And one day I knew I was gonna go to show and tell the next day and I found one of these brochures and brought it for show and tell without my mother's permission. My mother did not know. So um, I brought it in and I was so proud to tell the whole class how my mother was a Tahitian dancer. I think the teacher's jaw must have dropped like three feet. She wasn't quite sure, you know, what to say about it. But of course my mother was in full costume, you know. They had like grass that was dyed. It was true Tahitian uh, paraphernalia. And also in her troupe she had fire dancers and, and all the things. So I do come home from school that day and, you know, I was having my snack at the kitchen table and my mom was busy probably preparing dinner. And I started to tell her how happy I was was that you know I had this brochure and my mom had five kids so she's cooking and listening to the story and then all of a sudden you could see it dawn on her face she realized what I was saying that I had brought her Polynesian career brochure with her in full regalia into school and she stopped and looked at me and she said what did your teacher say and I said oh the teacher you know thought it was great and my mom would just took it in stride that's how my mom was and she was like okay you know but one of my most proud moments of my mom being a Tahitian dancer and telling all my school friends about it but I'm sure after that she kind of had to talk with me not to do that again so um, how did I go down that rabbit hole I don't even know what I was talking about but let's keep moving and what else do I want to show you? Next up, I'm going to show you this primitive bowl. Now this is a little bit of a different shape. Most of the primitive bowls that I find are a trencher, that, which is like an oval. Um, they're round. This one has almost like a football shape. And I think it's because it, the bottom says made in India. But I felt this bowl was beautiful enough to pick up. I paid a couple of dollars for it at the flea market and the wood is very um, thick and heavy and I thought it was just gorgeous. You know me with wood bowls. I love wood bowls. So I said yes to this. I'm pretty sure I paid $3 for it. It does have some wear here or a little chip and it's been worn down. But with primitive decor, when you find items, well, I should speak for myself, when I find primitive decor items, I don't worry as much about the condition as maybe in a different decor. So if it had a big crack in the bottom, I wouldn't have bought it. But any kind of chipping or anything along the edge, I feel it's okay to pick up. And I imagine I'm going to sell this, I imagine, for about the $30 mark. All right, the next item is several pieces. I'm going to lift pretty heavy this tray up, if I can do this without having everything crash to the floor. I found this gorgeous set. This is a pewter set put out by Selangor, S-E-L, oh, my phone just went to ching, S-E-L-A-N-G-O-R, it is vintage, and it has the, I think this is the, I'm gonna say chocolate pot or teapot, I could be wrong about that, so it has that one. I don't think this is the coffee pot, but it could be. And it has this pot. It is like a hammered um, pewter. And I don't pick up a lot of pewter, but I knew this was special right away. It's got the wrapped, um, it's not bamboo, I'm gonna say the wrapped raffia handles. I'll have to look up what that's called. And it also has the sugar and the creamer and the tray. I'm gonna put it down, it's quite heavy. And I did get two other pieces with it. This is the little sugar. I guess maybe the people that made this didn't really think people needed too much sugar. I would need a much bigger sugar bowl. And also I got this piece in the same set, beautiful candle holder. 
So like I said, this is Selangor, S-E-L-A-N-G-O-R, pewter, and it's marked 97. I don't know if 97 would be the purity of the pewter. I don't know much about pewter. I'm looking, 97%. But I thought this was gorgeous. I'm hoping the camera will focus on the mark. And there it is. I believe Slanger is United States. I'm not sure about that. I'm going to have to check. And I paid $5 for the whole set. This brand, usually the vintage ones, bring very good money. So my guess off the top of my head, collectively, this will be about the $100, $125 mark. But again, I have to do research. Everything here on the table, nothing's de-stickered, nothing's clean. I've been running, I've been doing all kinds of stuff, and I'm just getting to this now. I've almost cleared through the back room, which had hundreds of items and getting all of that listed, getting all the Pottery Barn listed. So these are the next items that will be coming into my store. But please understand, guys, if you're interested in any of this, it's going to take me probably another week, 10 days, because I have a few events coming up that, um, that I'm going to be doing. And yeah, so that was item number something or another. I've lost count, but let's keep going. I also realized that I found this salt and pepper shaker same brand so even a better find for five dollars so how many pieces did that make one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten pieces for five dollars it's 50 cents a piece yes please you can't get that price at an auction you can't get it at um i wouldn't say an estate sale maybe a flea market but this is a thrift store so very happy for that and I hope my phone to chinging away is not bothering anybody. I left all the notifications on just because I'm waiting for a few notifications about some things out there. All right, we're going to switch gears 360 degrees. I think it's 180. We're going to switch gears 180 degrees. I found this bag of Star Wars figures. So I haven't counted them yet. I did put them on my Instagram because I know nothing, 0% about Star Wars or figures or toys. But when I see a bag like this, it says 34, oh, I wrote the 34. I did count them, 34 pieces for $4. That's a no brainer. And I will sell all of the Star Wars at a lot. I am not researching every little figure. Nope, not doing any of that. This has the villains, it has all the guys. I know nobody's names. I think maybe Han Solo. You know, I know the famous ones, Princess Leia. But like this guy with the long neck, <laughs> no clue. I wouldn't even remember if you told me. Um, who is this? This is like a Sith Lord, right? That's probably wrong. Very cool figures and along with them came Batman. He was thrown in there. And this is Catwoman, nope. Batgirl. So 34 figures for, what did I say? $4, yes, 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 please. And like I said, I'll be listing them as a lot. I just lay them out on a white um, poster board or a foam board, take a couple of photos, I'll turn them a little bit, done. Most likely I'll put them on auction because I don't know all the figures if I have a good one or if they're all just mediocre so I'll just lay them all out and I won't try to name any of them I'll say see photos for what's included and done as quick as possible for a lot like this okay next up is something I am still picking up and it's moving slower than it used to brass candlesticks now, just about five years ago, a lot of brass was just selling at crazy high prices. And then the word got out, the market got flooded. Not to say brass doesn't sell, the older brass does better, in my opinion. The shiny stuff that's made in like, I don't know, the 1990s, where it's very cheap and light and it's more gold than brass color, that I try to stay away from. But this one is vintage. I paid $3 for the two. I'm looking for markings. There is a marking down there. It's either an M or a W. I have sold that before. Can't remember who M or W is. I will look it up. I will put into a Google search, um, letter M, brass candlesticks, and letter or initial W, brass candlesticks, and then look under images and find what I have. I look for the maker's mark, and that tells me what I have. I imagine these will go for probably about the $25 to $28 mark, just a guess. And you guys know me, I'm always running different sales. And yeah, said yes to these, very heavy, which I love. 
The next item I found at Goodwill, I'm really changing up gears here, is this gorgeous vintage handbag. When I see something like this out of the corner of my eye, it takes me two seconds to swoop up. So I'm standing there talking to a friend. I must seem really rude in the thrift store because every time I meet up with a friend or somebody I know or we're chatting, I am always looking over their shoulder to see what's coming out, what's in the peripheral vision, what's in the parameter. And so I'm standing there talking to my girlfriend or talking to somebody and um, I said, I'm sorry, one minute. And I just took it right off and put it in my cart. I can tell when it's a nice handbag by the detail of the work, of the beadwork, beautiful. Look at the chain. The chain is one of those round rope chains. There's, I'm sure there's a name to this chain, but you can tell when you have a vintage, better made beaded evening bag, I'm gonna call it, by the quality of how it's made. And then almost always when you open them up, it has a silk lining. So this one's no different, and you can tell it's a silk lining from the feel of it, but there's usually a tag right in the side. I don't know, <laughs> there's the Goodwill sticker. So see this little white tag? Let's see if I can show that to you, right there. That'll tell you if it's silk. If this piece of material is silk, you know that it's a better made bag. If it's a cheaper made bag, most times this will be polyester or acetate, I think it is. But this says, what does this say? Handmade in Hong Kong. We love that. And it's in beautiful, clean condition. I think all the beads are there. The clasp, which is a kiss clasp, that's what we call that. Let me get the chain straightened out for us. See this kind of clasp when you, here it go, has a little click to it. That's called a kiss clasp. Absolutely, yes. If I was a woman out on the town and I, I dressed fancy, I would love to carry something like this. Look at that beadwork. Super, super thrilled. And what did that tag say? Uh, $2.99. Okay, I will take a silk lined, beautiful vintage beaded, probably hand beaded, I would imagine. This is all hand beading evening bag for $3. All right, it's gonna get crazy because it's a bunch of mishmash. I picked up, which I never pick up, Nintendo DS games. So I picked up Barbie, and I picked up Hello Kitty, and I picked up Disney's Tangled. I know nothing about these, and I paid $5, which is a lot for me. I probably would feel more comfortable paying two or three, but I'm starting to wet my feet more and more selling games for game systems. Now I have sold games before, but the work of comping all of it because I know nothing about games can be tedious. So when I found these, there were about 20 of them. And to further my education, I just picked three of them. Why did I pick Disney, Tangled, Hello Kitty, and Barbie? I really couldn't tell you, but that's what my brain told me to pick. So at $5 a piece for a learning experience, I won't lose money on them. What I do is I always check to make sure that the item is in there. So that's what it looks like inside. I look at the little booklet to make sure it's not heavily gross or you know that it wasn't taken care of. And yeah, so $15 I paid for three DS games. And we'll see, I'll have to look them up, Nintendo DS. But I figured it was worth a shot to further my education. All right, another item that I took from a thrift store was this huge candy jar. Is this even a candy jar? What else would you keep in this? I'm not quite sure. It does have, it almost looks like a presidential seal. So I'm going to have to look at that. I know this like, is it Americana glass or I'm not even sure. Let me see. I doubt this is going to pick up on the camera. See this circle right here? It has like the eagle with the 1776 on it. What else is here? Uh, looks like the Olympic torch. I could be wrong about that. But beautiful condition, very tall. Try to be quiet doing that. A beautiful amber glass. And I paid $6 for it. And we'll see. We'll see what it brings. Now these could be very plentiful. But as you guys know, I'm trying to do a little bit more glass, get over my glass phobia. It's not even a phobia, it's just that I'm not really interested in selling glass. 
but I do know that there is quite a bit of glass out there that's very valuable. So while I'm learning, I will take pieces in that will wind up not being valuable, but it's okay because my buy-in price is never high. Now, if I don't know about a subject, I would never drop like $25 or $50. It's just not my business model. But while I'm learning different niches, I allow myself to buy items by my eye. I allow myself to be trained that way. And that's like with any career field you're in. You have a training period. Whether you go to college for something or you have on-the-job training, there's a certain learning period of where you're taking in information and trying to really hone your skills. And that's what I do for any niche. So right now I'm doing video games. I'm doing clear glass, which I consider this clear glass and electronics a little bit, which electronics ugh, <laughs> is my number one least favorite thing to sell. Recently, I picked up a turntable. Who was it? I couldn't even tell you the brand, Denton or something like that. And I put it on Facebook Marketplace, a million questions I have no idea how to answer. So um, there's that, but I will learn enough to be able to pick up or at least spot items that will make a good profit. Will I learn everything about it? Probably not. Not on audio equipment. There's so much to learn. But I feel like if an opportunity comes along at a yard sale or something like that, I want to base knowledge so that while I'm out in the field picking up the stuff I normally pick up, if I see something out of the corner of my eye, the little bit of research I do by picking up items along the way, I'll do okay. And that turntable, I think I paid $6 for also. So we'll see how it does. I don't expect it to bring a great return. And in that instance, if I re-donated back, that's okay. But in my seven years of selling, I've re-donated such a little amount it's crazy to even think of it, but it could be too because I hold on to stuff a long time until it sells and almost all of it sells. So the other day I sold, oh, now I'm going to test my knowledge. I sold a top that I've had for, I'm going to say three and a half years and it brought a very good price. It didn't cost me anything to keep it listed and I think I had three or four dollars invested in it and I'm going to say it sold for 35 or 40. So I'm okay with that. I wouldn't want all of my sales to work that way, but I, I felt okay about that. All right, chatty girl today, can you tell? Maybe all the chocolate I ate with Lisa. Lisa and I filmed a chocolate video that um, we're hoping to post if the lighting was okay in it. My videos have been overlit. Guys, I know it, I'm on it, I'm trying to figure it out. We're doing all the research of what is going wrong with my videos being too well lit. So I'm trying different things. So bear with me while I figure all of this out. But you know me, I'm gonna keep going. And when I look back and see all of the videos that I made in the beginning of this process, I'm sure I will just die of embarrassment. But here we go. All right, next up, I think a few of you saw these in my cart in Goodwill. And I put these on Instagram, maybe. Sometimes I just post things on Instagram to show you what I'm finding ahead of time or to say, hey guys, what is this? If I don't know what something is, I'm trying to reach over and do this without killing myself. Let's see. Oh, these guys are heavy. Look at these lamps. Are these not the most gorgeous things? And boy, are they heavy. Brass bases. This is either brass or bronze. I'm gonna put one down so that we can take a look at one. Okay, beautifully made, great condition. They look brand new. These are mass marketed. They are from China. They are not like an American made, artist made type of thing. But here's the kicker. I paid $4 a piece. I thought for sure that was a mistake. I think they were supposed to be 40 a piece maybe. But for $4, I could not grab them quick enough. And you guys know that all of my thrift stores and, and the area in which I live, I am really blessed to have such great prices. But when you find lamps like this for $4, yeah, died and gone to heaven. So beautiful. So I got the two of them for $8. I feel like, not a shame, but I feel silly even saying that. I'm not sure what I'm gonna charge for these yet. Most likely, I'm gonna sell them local. I'm giving myself a break lately and selling more and more local. I'll put them on eBay with local pickup only. I might ship them, but I'm gonna sell them together. So it would be taking the shades off and selling two bases and two very highly breakable shades in one box, the box, it will be way over the dimensions of what's reasonable to pay for shipping. 
I wouldn't do that to my buyer. So most likely I'm going to sell these local pickup only, but just so pretty, so, so pretty. If I needed lamps, I would consider keeping them if I had pink in my motif, but I don't, and um, I'm good with lamps. So um, yeah, they'll be sold, $8. We will see what these bring. Right now I have no idea. I'm going to guess 150 to 175 for the pair. I will be open to offers on Facebook and I will report back on Instagram of what they actually bring. I think that's super important for everybody to know like what actual items are bringing. It's great that we all post these pictures of these big piles of packages or what we're buying, but to me more importantly is what we're selling and what price it's bringing. So I always like to share that information when I can. And yeah, that's enough of that. I'll stop being chatty on the lamps. All right, next up I found this gorgeous vase. So pretty. Pretty, pretty. Now, the minute I see this, I know this is more contemporary. I don't feel this is vintage or an antique, but the bottom, once you peel the $5 price tag off, if I can get it off, these stores drive me crazy. You know, all the stores do this. They put the sticker right over the, right over the mark, and they know we're all gonna peel it off. So I'm going to see if I can see what this says. Made in England is showing so far, and we'll see who this is. Here we go, Royal Worcester, Worcester. I can never say those names and I practice. Worcester, Royal Worcester, is that how we say it? Anyway, beautiful vase, gorgeous, gorgeous. Now the antique pieces in that brand, I'm not gonna to try to say the brand again, will bring very high money, some of them. We're talking hundreds and thousands of dollars. Will this piece, I don't think so but I didn't want to leave it behind. So pretty, and I think somebody's gonna want this. I will ship this. Okay, so I paid five. I'm guessing probably 35 to 40. I haven't done the research yet. Okay, so this video is probably gonna turn into two different videos because I still have a table full of stuff. Amazing what I bring in. Amazing how I can shop. All right, next up is this Egyptian printed, looks like Nefertiri, is that who that is, in Pharaoh? Beautiful Stein cup type of thing. I paid $1.99 and this is Limoges. So I'm not sure if this was sold in like an art museum gift shop or where this came from. I'm sure I'll find out. But, and I did not do research. I felt like the graphic was good. The condition was good, beautifully painted. And Limoges is always a yes. As long as it's not super big amounts of dishes. Even the Limoges dishes that I picked up probably, I'm going to say it's got to be almost a year ago now, nine months ago, I've been selling off the serviceware. I broke up the set because I tried selling the set as, as one lot. It was 95 pieces. In fact, it's in my, my corner buffet here, my, my built-in. Um, I tried selling it together. Very few people want 95 pieces of dishes you know, in a certain pattern. You really gotta to commit to something like that. And the price is high, especially if it's Limoges, France. So I have been selling off the pieces, the serviceware has been selling, but Limoges is a good name. It's, it's, if you have a piece like this, I think it brings attention to the piece rather than if this was like blank on the bottom or a no name. So that's my thinking on it. And I said yes to an Egyptian Limoges, France, mug. I think this is France. Limoges, this might be United States. Let me check. Okay, so this one is not made in France. It's made in Egypt. What? <laughs> okay, that's very cool. All right, the next few items I'm going to blow through. I'm just going to show you what I got just to give you a sense of what I pick up. Probably none of it is high dollar, but this is the way my eye sees and I start putting things in the cart and somehow that works out for me. So item number one is an elephant wood bookend. I wish I would have gotten two. I just found one. I always check that he has both his tusks and it looks like the wood of the bookend has a little bit of a split to it, but it's still in one piece. So not a really super high quality item, but he's just too cute. So I said yes to him, making sure he has both his eyes. Does he? Yes. Okay. The next up is Edgman Milk Money. It's a bank, crackle finish. You can see it there. It's got a cork in the top, no stopper in the bottom. So I guess when you save in this bank, you have to pull the cork out. I paid $2 for it. 
I think this is contemporary. I don't think it's especially old, but I thought maybe somebody would want that. Next up is this beautiful white pitcher. I love this style. It's almost like an ironstone style. I don't know. This is probably porcelain or ceramic. And who put this out? This is Gottinger. Gottinger and Company. So Gottinger is a company that I look up piece by piece to find out what it will sell for. And this was not one of the higher ones, but I really liked this uh, style. Would I do that for a big purchase? No, I would always go buy comps. So say the whole set was for sale. I would never say, gee, that's pretty. Let me buy that. Absolutely not. I would always run comps. But something where I pay, I just peeled off the sticker, $2 for, I will put in my cart just on aesthetic because I feel like I could get 20 or 25 very easily for it. All right, just a little brass tin. Now you're going to see all the little scraps and things I throw in my cart. $1.99. Couldn't even tell you why I bought this, but I did. So there's that. I picked up this piece of pottery. This is the three monkeys, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. It's triangular, it's a dish, I paid $1.99. It does have the initials CP and P. No idea, gonna have to Google that, but really pretty. It's a cobalt blue glaze. I bought these two dishes. I have no idea about the purpose of what these are for. Let's see if I can get this tape off. You know what? I'm going to have to get a scissors. Hang on. Okay, so I took the tape off of the dishes, and this is what they look like. Now, to me, when I first look at it, it almost looked like a cigarette, like an ashtray. I don't know that it is, and it's got this little, um, I don't know what to call this, sidecar. <laughs> it's like this little slim extra dish piece. So if it was an ashtray and your cigarette rested here, would they put the matches in there? That sounds dangerous. But I said yes, I liked them very much. Leaf dishes, and I believe they're made in Japan. Let's see what they say on the bottom. Left in China, and it's got the number hand-painted. It says a bunch of other stuff. So hand-painted, left in China, Little paisley blue dishes in the shape of leaves with a little sidecar do hickey thing. Leave a comment down below if you guys know what this is. I'd love to find out. I bought some aluminum coasters. They're just pressed with, um, looks like a goose or a duck, probably a duck, waterfowl. And how many did I get? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight of them. And I believe I paid $1.99 for these. I bought some belt buckles at the Williams Girl Flea Market. An eagle. I sell quite a few of this type of belt buckle. The next one is a steer head or a bull head or a cow head. And the last one is probably my favorite is a horse and it's brass. So I bought those three. What did I pay for three? I believe I paid $12 for three. So they were $5 each. I offered her $12 for three and she accepted. So that makes it $4 a piece. I imagine those belt buckles will bring probably around the $15 to $18 mark. But if they, even if they go for $12 each, that's turning, um, what did I say? I paid $12 into $36. Now the $36 will be before fees. So you have to take out PayPal fees and eBay fees and taxes. Always remember taxes. All right, what else, what else? I found this fun little picture. This is Williams Grove again. I have no idea who this is. Is a woman walking? Is that a woman? There's a woman on that side, a man on this side. And what does this say? Haynes, Gainsborough Haynes, decoration. <sighs> I liked it. So I allowed myself to buy this. I don't imagine it's going to be super high dollar because of the quality or lack of quality of the aesthetic. Not that it's not pretty, it is. But when something's a very high dollar amount, most times, not always, most times, there was great care in the hand painting. And this is sweet. So off the top of my head, okay, so this was at the flea market. I paid $3 for this. Off the top of my head, maybe 12 to 15 
and it looks to be, I don't know, is it a gravy pitcher? I couldn't even tell you. Okay. So for all you wonderful followers who think I'm so knowledgeable, I'm not. I do have some knowledge about some things, but the rest of it, I'm just flying by the seat of my pants and making it up and it works. Okay, a tin egg. <laughs> I hope you like these kind of hauls where I'm just showing you all the stuff that I bought and all the things that I'm selling. That's what the inside looked like. Really pretty and it has the date 1894 on it. Let's see if this will snap back together. It does and it's in great condition. So very fun and I paid $1.99. I picked up some brass, I'm gonna say candle holders. I don't know what these are. Okay, so they hang on the wall. I don't know what they hold. See the hole there? I guess the hole could be for a glass votive, like a sconce, I'm guessing. So I have no idea, but I paid $2.99 each because Goodwill had put $6.99 on one and $2.99 on the other. And I asked which price was correct, and they said the $2.99, that the $6.99 probably just got stuck on there. So I paid $6 for the two, and these are vintage. All right, I think I'm going to wrap this up. I do have a few other odd pieces. Maybe I'll do one or two more. Okay, so this was kind of like a mistake on my part. I love these. And they were $1.99 each, but this is the salt, this is the creamer. I'm a boob. What I was thinking, I'm not quite sure. I knew this was a creamer. I guess I thought this was the sugar, but um, really sweet pattern. I like this very much. So $4. I don't think I'll take a big money loss on these. So really pretty. I like the design. I like the coloring. And I thought maybe if somebody is collecting, this is how I soothe my mind, that I miss that this is salt and this is cream. I'm thinking, well, if somebody's collecting them, they might have broken these pieces and they need them. So there's that. All right. We have a macrame wool hanging on a wood dowel. Somebody made this. Now, I wish it was a plant holder. Recently, I picked up a seashell plant holder. Uh, it was all seashells, and I have picked up the macrame plant holders when they're of great design and have a lot of twisting in them. Those bring very good money if they're in good condition. So the one thing that you have to watch for in the macrame plant holders is that it doesn't have mildew staining or mold staining. Because people water plants and overwater, if you have a macrame um, plant holder, a hanging one, and it's been repeatedly wet, sometimes the cotton, um, what do we call this, jute or, or string rope, will have a mold condition, it could have smell. So I always take a good look to make sure. Now this one's a wall hanging, this is not a plant hanging. But really pretty pattern. I don't know what else this would be used for except for decoration. So I love this, thought this was great. Okay, for real, last item is a kitty cat planter. I don't know when I started picking up cats, but it's a thing. If I see one that I like, I pick them up. Cats are so well loved, so I always say yes to really pretty cats. He's a little planter, like an air plant would be really cute. He could even hold like makeup brushes on your vanity or paint brushes, pencils. What else could he hold? All kinds of fun things. But I really liked him or her. I don't know, I think it's a him. And there is no marking on the bottom, but he's vintage. All right guys, that is my haul for today. I hope I didn't go overboard in showing you too much, but at the pace things are coming in, I'm trying to keep up with stuff coming in and going back out, and I'm always saying to myself, did I show that to YouTube? I can't even keep track. But thanks so much for watching. Thanks for all your support. I appreciate all of your comments and when you help me identify what I've picked up that I have no idea about. And please hit the like and subscribe button. And as always, go out and get what's yours. Mm -hmm.